So we've dealt with the most basic case when there's a 1 out on the front of our x squared term. But now we're going to be looking at trinomials where it's not a 1. And now this section 5.3 is very impractical. All that we're doing is guessing and checking. So I'm really frustrated with this section. I don't even think we really need to cover it. Because in the next one, 5.4, we're going to have a more precise and a faster way to factor these. But, just to show you that it can be done with our traditional method, guessing and checking, we're going to do a few. Okay, but if you're not comfortable with this one, or you're not quite grasping it, look on to the next 5.4, and you can complete the homework however you want for this section. Okay, but for the guessing and checking, we'll take a peek. So we're going to work backwards, first of all. I have two factors here, and we are going to foil it out just to see what kind of combo we get. Uh, get to for our trinomial. So when we do first, what are we looking at? I get 6x squared. Outer will give us 8x. Inner plus 15x. And last we get plus 20. Okay. So we want to simplify, combine our like terms in the middle here. So we're looking at 6x squared plus 23x plus Okay, so it's not as obvious how to break up these factors. The beginning, I can do 1 and 6, 2 and 3, 3 and 2. In the back, my constant could be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 10 and 20, 4 and 5, 5 and 4. Ugh, so many options, we don't want to have to try them all. But, with this method, we have to until we get to the correct one. So it's a pain in the butt. But again, in 5.4, we're going to have a prettier, more streamlined method for tackling these. But continuing on as normal. To factor this thing, we reverse the multiplication. So starting from this trinomial, trying to get to those products, what has to happen? We look for two binomials, the first one and the second one, so that the multiplication gives us the trinomial that we're looking for. So what does that mean? The product of the first two terms, product of the first two, has to be 6x squared. We need that first thing. Then what? The product of the outside terms plus the product of the inside terms has to give us what? 23x. Product of the outside plus product of the inside has to give us 23x. Then the product of the last two has to give us what? 20. Thing on the end, the constant back there. Okay. So we know the answer because we started with the multiplication, but it's literally just going to be trial and error if we didn't have the products to start out with. So we'll just do two examples, nothing too overwhelming, and again, we'll have a better method in the next section. So let's take a peek. In the very beginning, I'm trying to break this up into two factors, and I know that I'm going to have to split up x squared into an x and an x. But there isn't a 1 out on the front, there's a 3. And 3 is prime, so I know that my option is going to be 3x and 1. Some order of that. Okay, so we'll start there. Then what do we need to look at? Breaking up negative 8. Okay, so I need to break up negative 8 into factors. Multiplying to negative 8. And adding to negative 10, but not just these guys, we needed to take into account the factors that we're multiplying out on the front as well, which is a pain in the butt. So if I choose any combo of 1 and 8, my numbers are going to be pretty big. They're not going to get us to negative 10. So I'm going to rule those out. And we'll be looking at 2 and 4. And one of them needs to be negative to give us negative 8, I'm just going to start with negative 2. We just have to try, which is a pain. So, negative 2, if I assign that to the first, and 4 to the second. We'll see. Guess and check. So, let's check and see what we get. If I FOIL, 
I'll get 3x squared first. Outer will give me plus 12x. Inner, minus 2x. And last, minus 8. So do we get there with our middle term? No, I did a positive 10. I'm looking for a negative 10. So what does that tell me about my signs? I need to flip those around. So in reality, it should be 3x plus 2 and x minus 4. And we can double check, foil it out and see. First, 3x squared, outer minus 12x, inner plus 2x, last minus 8. We get there with our middle term now. But again, it's just guessing and checking, trying different combos, switching these guys around until we get to the right thing. Pain. But what can you do? We'll try another one just to show you that it does work with the guessing and checking. It's just time consuming. So down here, 2 is prime. So I know I'm going to need a 2x and an x. And I need to break up negative 15 and the factors. Multiplying here. Adding to a negative, but we need to take into account this factor of 2 and this factor of 1. So, let's think. What are we going to be around? 1 and 15 are going to give us really big factors. We need things that are closer together. I'm going to try 5 and 3. And let's just assign the negative to the first one, positive to the second. See what happens. So, if I give... Mm, let's see, positive 3, negative 5. Throwing them in somewhere, see what we get. Do we get close? x squared minus 10x plus 3x. Not even close. So, let's try flipping it. If I have, this one was not good. If I put negative 5 over here and a positive 3 over there. Let's try that one, see if we get any closer. So first, 2x squared plus 6x minus 5x. So this one will give me a positive 1, but I need it to be negative. So that one's pretty darn close, but what do we need? We need to switch the signs around and have positive 5, negative 3. Let's check. And again, foiling. First, 2x squared, outer minus 6x. Inner plus 5x, last minus 15. So we get to the middle term that we were looking for. But again, in this case, we had to go through one, two, three different rounds before we got to the correct answer. And that's going to take a while. So in the next section, we're going to be talking about a better method for dealing with factoring these trinomials when we don't have a one out on the front.